who was the crazy woman who lived in the mountains of montana in the mid 1800s and terrified the native americans who hunted nearby her story is depicted in the 1972 film jeremiah johnson starring robert redford and described in more detail in the book crow killer her name was jane morgan she was the wife of Connecticut farmer John Morgan and mother to two young sons and a teenage daughter. The Morgan family answered the call of the West in the mid-1840s and joined a wagon train across the American frontier. Unfortunately, they separated from their group in Montana and were attacked by a dozen Blackfeet warriors, who scalped Mr. Morgan and killed their two young sons. Then they assaulted and killed the Morgan's teenage daughter. When she found the bodies, Mrs. Morgan went wild and killed four of the warriors with an axe before the rest fled on their horses. Soon after that, she was found by mountain man Jeremiah Johnson, whose real name was John Johnston. Young John Johnston, coming on the scene at the end of that August day in 1846, saw in a moment what had taken place before his arrival. He learned at once that he could get no sense out of Mrs. Morgan, that he was dealing with a crazy woman. He did help her to dig four graves and to bury her three dead. In the fourth, she buried her husband's scalp. Johnson cut, sharpened, and drove four posts, one for each mound. He watched while Mrs. Morgan rammed down onto those posts the heads of the four Blackfeet she had killed. Johnston stayed nearby for three days, long enough to build Mrs. Morgan a small cabin of cut logs. In the film, Johnston finds one of the boys, who he takes along and names Caleb, but in the book, none of the children survived. When he had carried her few belongings into it, along with some of his own supplies for her, he found that his stay was over. Later he told his friend and fellow mountain man old John Hatcher, that squaw pinted her musket at me. Poor critter, she had me scared. As the years went on, and the mountain men met each other in hunting cabins and trading posts, Johnston learned that the story of Crazy Woman was already an epic of the West. Mrs. Morgan stayed by the cabin he had built for her, which is to say that she stayed by her four graves, refusing and even fighting all efforts to move her to the settlements. Crazy Woman's shrill keening for her dead, each night come sundown, was as his chorus of the fates. The visitors said that Crazy Woman hunted in the river breaks for sustenance. Mountain men and overland parties helped her with gifts. John Johnston, in particular, was to come by night, leave offerings by her door, and depart silently. Indians, especially Blackfeet, kept far from that cabin. In 1855, mountain man Del Gu went along with Johnson on his pilgrimages to the cabin of John Morgan's feared widow, Crazy Woman. Nine years now after her tragedy, Jane Morgan had many assistants among the mountain men. Yet Dell was a little surprised to gather how regularly Johnson had checked in through the years of his feuding with the Crows. Why would the mountain men help her so much, when she was part of the oncoming wave of settlers and ranchers that would forever change their way of life? We tend to remember all the fighting, but the book has plenty of examples of mountain men helping other people including the time Johnson took in a young lady from the Paigan tribe when she was left alone to starve to death by another tribe who had captured her. The same way the mountain men helped him on his first arrival. Come on, it's a getting late, Johnson said. Ye know what that means. Dell did know how crazy woman took the coming of darkness, that hour at which she had been bereaved. Instead, the trappers were hardly a quarter mile from the cabin when they heard her piercing shrieks. If in their Blackfoots heard that, they'd drop dead, said Dell. Unfortunately, 
the rigors of the extraordinary winter of eighteen sixty six to sixty seven were too harsh the nineteen ninety three book cowboys indians and gunfighters describes how bad this winter was for everyone in the great plains old timers began to notice in montana along the upper reaches of the missouri river migrating birds flew south early beaver and elk grew heavier coats than usual white arctic owls appeared for the first time snow fell on november 16 1866 and fell on and off for the next 10 weeks nothing unusual then it happened on january 28 the worst blizzard in history rolled across the plains from canada to texas the sky turned black temperatures plummeted to 68 degrees fahrenheit below zero while winds held at 60 miles an hour for three days and nights snow fell at better than an inch an hour ravines filled with snow to a depth of a hundred feet becoming level with the surrounding area horsemen blinded by swirling snow rode over the edge and were buried alive with their mounts farmers struggling to go from house to barn lost their way and wandered about until they died of exposure some were found only a few feet from their doorsteps there was not even safety behind solid walls the wind blew through every crack turning houses into icy tombs families were found in one bed huddled together in death cattle were helpless in the open they stood covered with snow eyes frozen shut crowded into ravines for shelter only to be buried in snow slides they starved even though grass lay beneath the snow herds drifted southward before the wind only to pile up against barbed wire fences where they froze the book crow killer explains why this winter was extra difficult for jane morgan along with the provisions johnson and some of his friends brought her she depended on what game she could shoot that winter it seems she went blind from a blow she had received from the blackfeet who descended upon all her family twenty years before early in the spring that came at last in 1867 johnson heard that the old woman had starved to death after her passing jane morgan's place in the mountains became legendary in a way that lasts to this day according to wikipedia paraphrasing the book islands on the prairie the name Crazy Mountains is said to be a shortened form of the name Crazy Woman Mountains. Given them in compliment to their original crow name, after a woman who went insane and lived in them after her family was killed in the westward settlement movement. And so, Jane Morgan's influence on the state of Montana continues to this day. More importantly, she brought peace to the mountains soon after she passed away, in a way that no one could have predicted, which will be the subject of another video. Thank you for watching. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for new videos every week or two, and see the description below for a list of books, films, and online resources featured in this video.